When we started Healthcare Without Harm in the mid-90s, we understood that the healthcare sector was an enormous part of the economy and had an enormous environmental footprint. Every year, hospitals generate millions of tons of waste, and much of it is toxic. The most amazing thing we learned was that the healthcare sector was the largest source of dioxin emissions in the country for medical waste incinerators. It was responsible for a, a large amount of mercury pollution. Hospitals were also damaging the environment in a number of other ways, ranging from the way they designed and built their facilities to the chemicals they used. So that was an incredible irony and a teachable moment. Because if you want to detox the entire economy, where do you start? You start with the sector and with the people who have an oath to do no harm. Back then, in 1997, healthcare people like myself had no idea that we were contributing in such an incredible way to a very toxic environmental problem. Healthcare Without Harm's first target was polyvinyl chloride, PVC, the most widely used plastic in medical devices like IV bags. When it's burned in incinerators, PVC creates highly toxic dioxin. So Healthcare Without Harm encouraged hospitals to use autoclaves instead of incinerators. Kaiser Permanente and Catholic Healthcare West and some other systems said, we do not want to be poisoning people in the name of healing them. And so they took up these issues. It created a momentum to get many other systems on board. And within a seven-year period, we went from 5,000 incinerators to 83. But then Healthcare Without Harm came to us and said, there is another chemical that's being used in IV bags and tubing that's pliable. And if it leaches into the human that's receiving the health care, then it can have harmful effects. And so we also then took it upon ourselves to transform the market for safer plastics. If you're an individual hospital, you don't buy much of anything on your own. There's about seven or eight really large group purchasing organizations that are uh, managing the collective supply chain for healthcare. And we realized early on that if we could galvanize the power of those group purchasing organizations, we can change the market wholesale. One of the most influential group purchasing organizations was Consorta. Consorta was able to work with Healthcare Without Harm to really come up with alternative products. So I think everyone won from the standpoint that we now had two viable suppliers of product uh, in the market for these PVC-free products. And now we're creating the market momentum to make this the standard uh, for all healthcare in the United States and in Europe, and increasingly globally. And not just for plastics. Healthcare Without Harm has also helped create markets for safer gloves, flooring, cleaners, electronics, and healthier food. And it's transforming the way hospitals are designed and constructed to reduce their impact on our environment and climate. But some of its biggest successes have come in its fight against mercury. When we started, the largest problem that was being reported to poison control centers around America was spilled mercury thermometers. You can't destroy mercury, it just circulates in the environment. And there's so much of the environment that it's impacting our health. And so we said, this is a problem we can eliminate. By working with Healthcare Without Harm, we were able to educate our members and take products containing mercury off our contracts. Those products were no longer visible to our members, and they were able to buy alternative products that did not contain mercury. More than 5,000 healthcare facilities in the United States are moving to eliminate mercury, and every major pharmacy chain has stopped selling mercury thermometers. Now, Healthcare Without Harm is turning its attention to the rest of the world. The use of mercury in healthcare is very widespread here in the Philippines. If we keep on using it, if we keep on burning it, if we keep on dumping it, we are the victims, but at the same time, we are the culprit. That's why the phasing out and the elimination is really the call of all international organizations, and we are part of that healthcare without harm. If we are not going to act now, something is going to happen to this generation. With the hospital 
being a an institution of taking sick patients. So we should be at the forefront of preventive action. Mercury is considered now an anathema to my institution. Mercury is forbidden. We've been able to then take that progress in the Philippines and bring it to other countries in the region, Vietnam, Malaysia, China. So we started with a single thermometer in a Boston hospital 12 years ago, and now we're at a scale where we can partner with the World Health Organization to eliminate mercury medical devices globally. Ultimately, what you want is to replace mercury with safer products. And the safer product or substitutes are available. So we can do, really. Today, Healthcare Without Harm is a global coalition of almost 500 organizations in 50 countries, working to ensure that the healthcare system no longer harms human health and the environment. Now is tackling the problem of global warming. The call and the challenge now is what is healthcare's contribution in terms of global warming or climate change? The importance of healthcare without harm is telling that healthcare sector and the healthcare industry to be responsible in the bigger community. We can no longer support healthy people on a sick planet. If we're going to hope to support the conditions for people to be healthy all over the world, we have to have a clean environment. It's not an option anymore. Healthcare can be a driver for that transformation and should be in the name of healing. <laughs>